Hello guys and welcome to the first video of the daily debrief section. So my general intentions with the daily debriefs are just kind of spitballing some ideas that I've been cooking up in the brain, I guess. Something that I feel like is maybe worth sharing or, you know, just kind of like a thought provoking dialogue as a way of getting some of the thoughts out of my head and onto a video for your viewing pleasure or disdain. Anywho, so there's a lot of topics, a lot of issues that really have people divided. But for me, there are three topics that kind of rise above the rest in terms of severity. These are topics that, at least from my perspective, do not really warrant a whole lot of division or friction, I suppose. Because again, from my perspective, it doesn't really seem that these topics are really politically advantageous for one party or the other. These are more or less humanitarian issues that kind of affect the whole global citizenry as a whole versus just, you know, a subsect of that population. Funny enough, one of these topics is incredibly divisive, or at least it can be, has a proclivity for it. The other one actually has kind of a lot of bipartisan support in terms of everyone kind of realizes something needs to happen. And the other one I feel like everyone knows about, but there's just not a lot of discussion really talking about what the hell we're going to do or what we plan to do about it. But yeah, so here are my three things that I am most concerned about. The first thing on the list, which I think is the biggest issue we are collectively facing, is climate change. So of course this one already comes with kind of its own political divide. Incredibly strong evidence would suggest that human activity is in fact just ruining the world in so many different ways. Whether it's the oceans, the forests, the Arctic, air pollution, just the sheer amount of trash hanging around. It's definitely something where it's like if you're in the know, you already know all of this. If you're not in the know, you probably still perceive it just a little bit. You know, the seasons aren't quite how they were during your childhood. Weather patterns seem to be getting a little bit worse across the nation, regardless of the nation you live in. But I think when you really look at the bulk of the scientific data throughout various fields of study, despite the overwhelming majority saying that we are definitely in some kind of crisis that needs genuine mitigation if we are to continue life as we know it based on current levels of consumption, there's a fucking hair flying around, then yeah, you know, we need to enact legislation legislation, we need to lower our carbon footprints, we need to do a lot of things. Because that does not affect just one group of society, it affects the entire Earth. And we only have one Earth, it's not like we can just snap our fingers and bam, you know, interplanetary travel. We kind of have to take care of the home that we have now. But really, even if you don't believe the scientific consensus, but you're really big on supporting the military, the Department of Defense has run many of its own studies that show that climate change is actually a huge issue that affects readiness. That also is just like an indicator that maybe it's actually something worth being slightly concerned about if the greatest military force on the face of the earth is like, oh shit, yeah, we should uh, plan around this or plan through it or, you know, terrible description. And while yes, people who disagree with climate action, people that actually are worth their weight in salt, and they can actually give you genuine descriptions of why various forms of climate action might actually be a net negative versus a net positive. It's like, yeah, there's definitely a lot of things that you don't want to overdo. For instance, you definitely don't want to just completely gut our energy infrastructure because we actually, for the time being, do rely heavily on coal, on natural gas, and you can't just get rid of those and just automatically assume that solar and wind are going to pick up the slack because that technology is just simply not there at this exact moment in time of filming. So I guess for me, it's not about just, you know, completely destroying the economic systems that we already have in place. It's more or less just trying to transition to a more sustainable future in the smartest way possible, utilizing all the resources we can so that we can basically lower those emissions and lower that impact quickly, effectively, safely for everyone so that we can both preserve the economy and also preserve the planet. So that's the first thing on the list. The second thing on the list, my number two biggest issue that I 
I'm most concerned about that actually does have a lot of bipartisan support is actually the risk of artificial intelligence. I've been listening to a lot of experts on this and it does get scarier and scarier the more you dive in. Things are not looking great if we do not cap this or regulate this. There's just too many things that can go wrong before you even get to sort of the more obvious ones like, you know, military applications. Before you even get to Terminator, you have deep fakes, you have robo calls that can now impersonate the voice of a loved one and try to scam you that way. There's now actually reports of people finding pictures of themselves on the internet that are not actually pictures of them. Yeah, it's a, it's a little disturbing. I think the biggest thing that I've heard is actually from Sam Harris, who basically makes the argument that once deep fakes get so good that it's genuinely hard to distinguish what is a genuine announcement from, say, a world leader saying that they are about to launch the nukes, you know, it, it's going to be down to, like, the, the seconds that you have to verify that this is actually a genuine announcement and not just a deep fake that someone made in their basement or wherever your deep fakes are stored. There's just so many things that could accidentally go wrong that we can't even grasp all the possibilities, really, because with these large language models that we have now with ChatGPT, it's like when you create an entity that can then teach itself how to do various tasks, the intelligence quotient just rises and eventually surpasses what we are capable of. Like, what's the likelihood that artificial intelligence basically becomes the equivalent of us and ants. Where it's like, you don't think about ants if you're walking through the grass. You're not taking into account how many bugs you might be squashing in the process. That's how much you care about them in relation to your own actions. Artificial intelligence might just be the same way, and that's a little not good. Yeah, so hopefully we can actually get the support that we need to actually mitigate any kind of real genuine crisis. Hopefully deep fakes in the future, you know, become easy to detect. Therefore, we don't have any kind of mishaps and that it's regulated so that it's safe because artificial intelligence really does have the potential to really change our lives for the better. It just depends on how we utilize it. And that brings us to the third thing on the list, nuclear disarmament. So nuclear weapons are really kind of this huge double-edged sword, double-edged missile, if you will. On one hand, yeah, like they've definitely deterred a lot of greater conflicts because it's a lot harder for a nation to go to war with another nuclear power when you have mutual assured destruction just kind of waiting on the outskirts. It's kind of hard to tell how many conflicts have actually been prevented just because of that, but in a lot of ways, they do help keep the peace. However, the amount of times that we have come so close to literally blowing ourselves up is astonishing. Whether it's the Bay of Pigs, or it's literally just losing a few nuclear warheads, or just some kind of accident, there's just all kinds of possibilities that can occur when you have the nuclear triad, the nuclear triad being land, sea, and air, you know, so nuclear subs, planes, or just like an ICBM, an intercontinental ballistic missile. <laughs> Yeah, nuclear winter might help climate change, but that's not exactly the kind of mitigation I was talking about back on number one. But yeah, if you guys are ever interested, it is a very interesting read. Just going through all the times that nuclear warfare or just a nuclear accident in general kind of almost happened. And so while nuclear weapons have been instrumental in keeping the peace, at least amongst more capable nations, and I suppose even some smaller ones, at least reducing the overall arsenals I think is a great first step because who needs to blow up the earth 20 times when realistically you just need enough to blow it up once. You know, you know what I'm saying? That's all I'm asking. It's not much. So yeah, in summary, those are the three things that I am most concerned about personally. The three issues that I think need either a lot more action or a lot more awareness because all three of these issues really do affect just about everybody. And therefore we would be doing a huge service for future generations if we really started now making as much headway as we realistically can. But even in light of all of this where it might look really bleak, not a lot of hope because 
because human greed is a hell of a drug, I still don't think that you can doubt human ingenuity because even with water scarcity and an increase in natural disasters, both in frequency and intensity, there is still a lot of reason to maintain that hope that we will be able to mitigate the worst of those effects because we already have some of the smartest people on the planet working on those things and humans themselves are incredibly adaptable. I think the biggest thing is just kind of getting everyone on the same page so that we can have more minds in the discussion and therefore that might lead to further solutions. So yeah guys that's um everything I have for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did feel free to hit the like button and the subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. We also have another series where we talk about all the albums behind me, breaking down the lyrics and the messaging, detailing that culture of resistance. So yeah, if you want to see more videos like this or more videos like that, hit the subscribe button, stick around, and we'll see you on the next one. Later.